Today I want to show you how to blend acrylic paint. I know it can be a challenge sometimes. I'm going to go through the list of do's and don'ts to avoid all the mistakes that I made. I'll also show you a super quick time lapse of this painting that I created. It's a sunset on a lake. It's super blended, so you'll see an example of blending techniques that hopefully will be helpful to you. When I think about blending tips, and especially when I want a seamless gradient of two colors, instinctively I would think of a thin paint that would kind of seamlessly blend into each other. And one way to do that would be to use water. Have the paintbrush super wet, the surface wet, and the paint super thinned out with water. That's on my list of don't. Using too much water isn't ideal, the paint will be see-through, it'll create a lot of streaks. The best way to start a gradient is to have the right paint consistency. So if it's too thick, it's gonna be hard to lay on the canvas and blend into each other the different colors. And if it's too thin, as I said, it's gonna create streaks and it's gonna be see-through. A paint that would be too thick would be kind of like a rich pudding, you know what I mean? And a paint that is too thin would be kind of like soup. And the perfect consistency would be like a nice thick gravy, yeah. Keeping the paintbrush damp really helps blending colors into each other, but having the brush too wet, like dripping wet, is gonna be super hard to work with. First of all, it's gonna create droplets, which is a no-no. Droplets are the enemy. Once a droplet falls onto your canvas, you have to kind of start over in that specific area because if you blot it, it, it lifts the paint. And if you leave it to dry, it's going to alter your color. So there's gonna be that droplet mark. Even if it's faint, it's gonna be visible. For droplets, I would blot it gently, gently right away and kind of like work that area specifically so that it's seamless right away. I like to keep a rag on hand or a sponge so that I could blot my paintbrush and remove any excess water. Keeping the brush damp is good, keeping the brush wet isn't so good. And to keep those pesky water droplets at bay, I keep the water jars on, my, on the side of my painting as opposed to in front. There's less chances of it happening. And I'm saying this because it happened to me hundreds of times. I was telling you that too much water would create like a streaky kind of effect. Another thing that might create that effect is if the brush is too stiff. So some brushes have very thick and stiff bristles that might create those streaks. So a softer brush, not too soft, you want a brush that can still hold paint, but on the softer side, it's a lot easier to achieve like a super blended and seamless background effect with softer bristles. There's no hard rules in art, right? You can do whatever you want. But I've noticed that when I try to blend a dark color into a light color, I usually get problems. Dark colors are very overpowering. A little bit of a dark color can make a, a light color way too dark really quickly. So when blending two colors together, especially a very light color and a dark color to create a gradient, like a seamless gradient, it's better to bring the light color into the dark color. And the way to do that is to clean the brush super often. What I would do is either use two separate brushes, one for a dark color and one for a light color, create my background the way I want it. And when I get to the point where I want that seamless blend, I would wash out one of the brush super well, remove the excess water, then dip it into the lighter shade first and bring that light shade into the dark shade. I've done the opposite so many times and created a mess where my gradient would like move into the light shade way too much and kind of overpower everything where I had only a sliver of white at the end just because dark colors tend to take over everything. And as you're blending, one thing to do is to pay attention to the pressure of your paintbrush, especially in that gradient where the two colors meet. Sometimes it'll require a heavier pressure to really work the colors into each other, but sometimes it's gonna require a very light touch so that it doesn't create streaks. It's kind of like give and take and adjusting as you're seeing things evolve on the canvas. 
paintbrush pressure is a thing. Also, I just want to repeat that in order to get a seamless gradient, one of the best things to do is to wash the brush often and thoroughly and really dab the excess water so that when you go on canvas, there won't be blobs of colors where it doesn't belong. Trust me on that. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, I have another tip. It's a simple tip, but it's super important and it's something that we tend to neglect. Before I tell you that tip, I want to show you that painting that I was talking about. It's a super quick time lapse of about a minute and I'll give you my tip right after that. If you're looking for blending technique for more realistic subjects, especially for like uh, portraits or skin tones, I know sometimes the paint dries a lot before you have time to blend a seamless skin tone. There's paint retardators, retardants? What I mean to say is that there's a product like this called Slow Dry by Liquitex that you could add to your paint that will extend the drying time. So you'll have a little bit more time to blend whatever you want on your canvas before it fully dries. On the bottle, it says not to add more than 25% of your solution. I found that I had to add quite a bit in order for it to make a difference. But one thing to note is that the more you add, the more liquid your paint will be and the more translucent it'll be. But by far, what's helped me the most in my blending and gradient technique was when I realized that I should always mix a lot more paint than I think I will be needing. Stay with me. I know it sounds obvious, but it's not. I usually would mix the colors I wanted and sometimes it would take a lot more color for a specific area for whatever reason i would run out and obviously you can never mix the same exact color twice so by the time i had done another mix to have more colors my paint would be dry on my canvas and i had to repaint that entire area or else i could see the difference so having more paint than needed is obvious to some but so easy to forget and really, really helpful. The worst thing that could happen is to paint a perfect gradient and see that some parts of it is kind of like see-through, like there wasn't enough paint. And you found that out after the paint dried and you have to start over completely. Don't, don't do it. If you'd like another painting tip, you can go watch this one. It's a really good one and I'll be seeing you very soon. I post videos every week, so subscribe and hit the bell. I would love to have you back. Thanks for watching.